Hey guys, this is God of Politics. I'm going to a brand new video, but before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But in today's video, I will be doing another video discussing the California recall election, and there is a lot of news about the California recall election. Most importantly, that... Uh, we have a lot of early vote data that has now come out. We can see here that 26% of ballots that have been sent out have been returned with a very large number, at least in raw numbers, of 5.7 million. Now, there's millions of ballots remaining, but we do already have 5.7 million ballots returned, which should give us at least some of, uh, somewhat of an idea of the situation that we are in with some of this partisan data, with the age data, with the racial data, that kind of thing. So if we look at first the partisan data here, we can see that um, there is reasonably high turnout amongst Democratic voters compared to Republican and Independent voters. And if we look at the share of ballots uh, that are taken up by Democrats, we can see here that 53% of the returned ballots are from Democrats, whereas just 24% of the returned ballots are from Republicans. So Democrats, you can see here in terms of just raw numbers, have a very, very substantial lead of over 1.6 million voters. Now, if you look at the age and, and ethnic group data, it's not as good for Democrats. For example, if we look at this age data here, we can see here that youth turnout is very, very low. 28% of all ballots are amongst 18 to 34 year olds, whereas just 14% of return ballots are amongst 18 to 34 year olds, whereas older people are more overrepresented, where you can see here 23% of all ballots are amongst older voters about 65, whereas 39% of return ballots are amongst voters over the age of 65. We can also look at some of this ethnic group data here. We can see that 55% of all ballots are amongst white or other voters, 27% Latino, 12% Asian and 3% African American. And then of the return ballots, white voters are overrepresented, whereas Latino voters are underrepresented. Now, that is not good news for Democrats. If you're Democrats, you want as many black and Latino voters as possible, specifically Latino voters, because they do make up uh, close to a third of the electorate, closer to about a quarter. But you know, they are growing sure the electorate, and they are a key and integral part of the Democratic base in the state of California. They did break for Democrats about 3 to 1, I believe. So you want as many of those voters as you can to turn out. And you also wanted to prove that Democrats do still have Latino voters as a key block in the Democratic Party. Because if you look at 2020, you can see a lot of those voters did leave the party and vote for Donald Trump. Whether that's a permanent trend or not, we may get some indication of that in this election here, but not having them uh, make up their share of the population is not good news for Democrats. But, you know, it's not to say that white voters are, you know, overwhelmingly Republican. They did actually break for Joe Biden by four percentage points, but in this recall election, they are likely to break for the yes category in favor of recalling him. But overall, I would say that these early vote numbers are quite uh, strong for Democrats. And, you know, punching in the numbers, doing things like that, assuming that about 90% of Democrats vote no, 90% Republicans vote yes, independents split down the middle. With these early vote numbers, you're probably seeing about a 60-40 split in favor of the no category, which means Newsom's leading by about 20 points here. Now, of course, that is underperforming his margin in 2018. It is underperforming Joe Biden's margin in 2020, where he won by almost 30 percentage points. And of course, Newsom, who won by about 24 percentage points here. Hillary Clinton, who also won by 30 percentage points, he is underperforming her but at the end of the day, a win is still a win. And you can see here that Newsom is winning by approximately 20 percentage points. That doesn't mean he's going to win by 20 percentage points overall. Now, while these early vote numbers are good for Democrats, that vote is likely to go down. And now there will be people saying, you know, this lead's going to shrink, you know, entirely and, and go in favor of the yes category once we have a lot of these election day votes coming in. That's not likely to happen due to the fact that such a large proportion of uh, the total votes are casted uh, by mail-in ballots. We can see here 17.8 million ballots approximately were casted in total in 2020. 15.4 million of those were casted by mail. That's almost 87% here. Even in 2016, where we didn't have a lot of these new laws, uh, where we didn't have, of course, COVID, we can see here even in 2016, 65% of total ballots were casted by mail, 8.3 million out of a total of 12.7 million. So in this election, we are likely to have 
pretty a pretty high percentage point uh, number for these mail-in ballots as well, and that's why it's going to be difficult to overcome that margin which the Democrats do hold right now. That's not to say it's impossible. That's not to say I'm saying it's not going to happen in all certainty, but it's not likely that the Republicans are going to win this race, and that's not necessarily saying Republicans are doing poorly. You know, this is a state that voted for Joe Biden by 29 percentage points. If you lose this race by five percentage points, that is a very, very strong performance. That means you overperformed the 2020 margin by 25 percentage points and of course it's not you know an even you know election between biden and trump to an election between elder and newsom if it's a yes or no question and then the second ballot and newsom's not exactly the most popular figure but you'd rather overperform than underperform and democrats are looking like they're going to underperform in this race and that's not where you want to be if you're the democratic party here so this is not good news for them overall. If we do look at some of the polls, the lead has expanded in their favor. It was very close at one point, almost going in favor of the remove category. It has since expanded, but it is still not where you'd want it to be ideally for the Democratic Party. It's about keep plus 9 percentage points now. We have polls up as high as keep plus 16 percentage points. We have polls as low as keep plus 5 percentage points. I don't think this Survey USA poll is really accurate. It seems like a very weird poll, especially since now they're all the way up at keep plus 10 in this adjusted leader column on 538 here. Um, so we do have a number of very interesting things going on. We do have the polls, which have generally been pretty accurate in California's history. I do think that they will be mostly accurate in the selection, and that is why I'm saying as of now, my prediction is about keep plus 8 percentage points. But these things could, of course, change. It could be more than that. It could be less than that. We have the election on September 14th, which is about nine days away as of now. So a lot of things could change by then. I will make one more video about it explaining what I think is going to happen. But as of now, I did just want to give an update to some of these recall numbers because you know, they're not good for Republicans in terms of winning the race, but they're good for Republicans in terms of overperforming. Democrats are really not in a solid position right now, just in general, in terms of their electoral prospects. And so that is not somewhere you want to be. You have Biden, whose approval is cratering. You do have, of course, the congressional ballot, which is not good for Democrats. You have a lot of this stuff going on with the infrastructure bill and probably not helping Democrats either. So there's a lot of moving parts right now, and they are not moving in the Democrats' direction. At this point, they're not very likely to keep the House. They're probably even favored to lose the Senate as of now. So there are a lot of things that could happen between now and 2022, but not just because of this recall action, because of a lot of other things. You'd rather be the Republicans than the Democrats going into 2022. But I won't get into 2022. I've made plenty of videos about that. And I'll make plenty in the future about it. But right now, we're talking about this recall. And as of now, I do think that the Democrats and Gavin Newsom are very likely to win. Will he come out stronger than he did before? It's a possibility. And I think that's a possibility that should certainly be entertained, given the lead that they do have uh, being more than expected. But, uh, you know, a 10-point win should not be something that the Democrats should celebrate. So we will see what happens. As I said, I'll make one more video about it. But again... Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens. So thank you all for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But again, guys, thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you guys later.